joining us from New York to talk to us is John Whitehead. He's the author of Battlefield America, The War on the American People. Tell us a little bit about the genesis of this book. What led you, what led you to write it? Well, I, uh, I'm a constitutional lawyer. I've been handling cases for 40 years, so different clients across the country. Uh, as I've watched the increased violence in the country, uh, government violence, uh, police violence, uh, I've watched the surveillance state grow. I work with uh, former Secret Service agents. By the way, I'm a former military officer. I was, uh, had top secret clearance. I worked on top secret programs. Uh, uh, I've just seen some things that really bother me. I'm a constitutionalist. I believe in the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment says really clearly that uh, before surveillance is to be done on an American citizen, there needs to be probable cause. That's some evidence of wrongdoing. But now you have the National Security Agency uh, downloading two million emails uh, daily on us. You have the post office recording all of our mail, 160 pieces, billion pieces annually. Uh, the FBI, the cases that we, we might want to talk about, a few of the cases I've been involved where the FBI comes in, uh, watches Facebook posts and stuff. We actually have uh, clients that have been arrested for just doing Facebook posts. So what I'm seeing is the government watching everything we're doing. At the same time, uh, they seem to be bumbling. They can't catch so-called terrorists and things like that while I'm watching innocent citizens. So that's why the book's called Battlefield America. Uh, I'm, and, and again, I represent the clients. I see what's happening across the country. And to be honest with you, the subtitle is The War on the American People. Uh, I'm telling people it's time to get accountability. It's time to get involved in your government. It's time to sit watching all the time, listening all the time, and get up and get active. Because uh, just 40 years of experience, I think we're headed down a long train. I've studied historical patterns. The historical patterns I see, uh, you know, uh, Nazi Germany, Stalin's, Stalin's uh, Russia. I, in fact, I had an NSA agent, 32-year veteran, who came by and visited. He had read my book, and he said, John, we're following the Soviet model. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, Homeland Security is a Soviet phrase. He said, we're moving into that era where everybody's watched. You can get in trouble for the slightest thing. And like I say, we might want to talk about some of the cases I've been involved in. It's pretty freaky. So if you've been involved and you're on the front lines, you see things that, that are scary, and uh, I think it's time to raise alarm. In fact, uh, the fellow who wrote our Bill of Rights, uh, James Mathis, said, take alarm at the first experiment with liberties. Well, that first experiment, folks, I'm telling people, happened a long time ago. So, uh, Mr. White, uh, give us specifics. Where do you see these infringements on our liberties, uh, specifically in the modern day? Well, I'm seeing them everywhere, by the way. Just uh, the government listening in on uh, phone calls. The police now are equipped with Stingray devices handed out by the Department of Homeland Security. They drive by your house. They download all your cell phone information. Those are fed into fusion centers, which are located across America. They watch everything you're doing. When you arrive in big cities, by the way, now you're tracked wherever you go. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security has been handing out surveillance cameras to local communities, and they tap into those. They watch those. But again, let's go back. We live in a surveillance society now, and uh, I'm afraid that our Fourth Amendment no longer works. Uh, we're not enforcing it. The courts are not enforcing it. Uh, I can say you're watched wherever you go. Uh, to give you an example, uh, just innocent activity. We, uh, I defended a Marine several years ago, 26-year-old Marine, uh, Marine named Brandon Robb, who uh, was just doing uh, Facebook posts about Obama. He'd come back from uh, Afghanistan. This is a decorated Marine, by the way. He took weapons away from Al-Qaeda, defused mines over there in the fields. And uh, he didn't like the executive orders the president was doing. He ranted. He thought the president should be arrested for treason. On a Saturday morning, he hears noise outside his home. This is near Richmond, Virginia. He walks to his uh, screen door, and he looks out. And vans are pulling up, SWAT teams running toward his house, uh, people in black suits running toward his house and white shirts. He steps close to the screen door and says, what's up? They're on the front porch. They said, sir, would you step out? He said, what have I done? Well, if they had done a proper, they, and I'm sure they did, they, a background check, he owned no weapons. So he wasn't a danger, obviously. He had no guns. He stepped out. He was immediately arrested, arrested, handcuffed behind his back. He argued. He was thrown against the fence. His back was lacerated. He gets to the police station. His mother called virtually every group. She finally got a hold of me. I called the police chief. I said, what's this man done? The police chief incredibly said to me, well, he's committed no crime. I said, wait a minute, sir. <laughs> this is an American citizen. He's committed no crime. You rest behind his back. What, what's the concern? He says, we're concerned about his Facebook post. He had a five-minute examination in a jail cell by a psychiatrist who set his pauses in answering. He, was he didn't want to answer. He didn't have a lawyer. 
And the fact that he's a 9-11 truther, which a lot of people are, and people don't agree with that. I'm not a 9-11 truther. But uh, he, he had another short hearing, he was put in a mental hospital. We filed a lawsuit and got him out. A judge really shouldn't have been there at all. But if I hadn't have been involved in this case, or at Rutherford Institute, come to find out, research shows that 1.5 million, these are called civil commitments, happen across America on an annual basis. But this was for Facebook post. This is free expression in America. We're supposed to have that, ladies and gentlemen. But today, if you say the wrong thing, and I tell people, especially veterans who are being watched under a program from the Department of Homeland Security called Operation Vigilant Eagle, be careful what you put on Facebook. Don't do any weapon poses and stuff like that. You can get arrested. So that's the state of the land I see with the clients I handle. And I, they're, they're coming in and out of my office, and I talk to former Secret Service agents who say the same thing to mm. me. We need stronger relationships between Washington, Silicon Valley, and all of our great tech companies and entrepreneurs. American innovation is a powerful force, and we have to put it to work defeating ISIS. So, Mr. Whitehead, when you hear that, what goes through your mind? Well, if someone is directly uh, connected to ISIS and there's facts that pertain to that, that would fit the Fourth Amendment probable cause scenario. When you're tracking guys like the fellow I just talked about, who's just, and they, know, they knew about him, they had the background of him, they, and, and the other people that I've helped over the years, that's fine, but she used the word extremist at the end. Um, listen, <laughs> if you read what came out of the Department of Homeland Security in 2009, there were three memos that the, the, under Obama, President Obama, they issued. One was right-wing extremism, left-wing extremism, and Operation Vigilant Eagle, three, three different memos. When I read them, what it said was over, in the, these are extremists, by the way, environmental groups, PETA, groups like that, the animal rights activists, they were categorized as extremists. People who believe in state rights over in the right wing category, they, didn't, they believe in the FEMA camps and stuff like that, they were extremists. Operation Vigilant Eagle, all returning veterans are watched. Those are extremists. When she uses the word extremist, who is she talking about? If she's talking about an ISIS, a terrorist, where there are facts, sure, you follow up on that, law enforcement should be doing their job. If they're watching everything, but when you have huge departments like the Department of Homeland Security, which I'm told by people who work inside the government, they're bumbling. TSA, to give you an example, uh, the TSA, they did a mock test not too long ago, and where they supposedly, different groups, would sneak weapons and uh, so-called explosives through. And 90% of the cases, those went through. So what we're dealing with here is a government that, and I was told this by a former NSA agent, John, when we're watching everybody, we're watching you, we're watching your next door neighbor, innocent people, we're watching all returning veterans, we're going to miss this person here because we don't follow up on our leads anymore. The computers are doing the job. So sure, if there's facts leading to that, follow up on it. If someone's saying I'm a member of ISIS and I want to blow up something or whatever they're doing, those leads should definitely be followed up. But tracking innocent American citizens like I'm seeing, if people want to live in surveillance states, that's fine, but uh, people have to realize that there are 5,000 federal crimes, there's over 400,000 regulatory crimes not committed with local state crimes now that you can get indicted on, you can get in trouble for. A man spends uh, 18 days in jail for overgrown grass, it's against the law. We help kids around the country on several cases where they were police pulled up and shut down their lemonade stands. It was against the law. So there are a lot of laws out there right now mm. that, can, that can be enforced against you if you live in a surveillance state.